in opposition to this request. There being none, I will now close the public participation portion of this request. Discussion is now open amongst the commissioners. There being none, I will entertain a motion from the commissioner. Sorry, I do want to make a comment. Um, Matt, I know that you've worked a lot with the applicants, and I'm really struggling with this plan. I do believe in higher density, I think it helps um, conserving our environment. The issue, the very, very big issue I have with this uh, is the, the abrupt change from one, the, the surrounding edge to this property. So. The fact that there's going to be a fence, even though it's required, to me, it's, it's just turning, it's, it's making this property totally turn its back to the, to the established neighborhood. Um, I think the concept is great. If it's going to be enforced, I don't, I don't know if the applicant, if the owner is going to really restrict this, or, and I don't know how he's going to do that, restrict it to senior citizens and, and spell that out in the covenants. And, I'm not sure, maybe that could be a condition that can be placed um, in this application. But the, the compatibility issue that I have with the, I, I'm having a hard time seeing this, the plan to, to work within this existing neighborhood. Um, I don't know if there's any, uh, anything else that. <laughs> I, I was trying not to mix too much of the PD discussion and mm -hmm. the site plan specifics with this. Um, That's right. They're talking about this. Right. The first action we need to vote on is the zoning, which is really where a lot of the density question comes to mm -hmm. bear. Um, R10 zoning by itself does not allow the development of eight units here. Mm -hmm. It cannot be done. Hence, the layout plan in your packet. Well, the you zoning know. itself, the most that will allow here is four dwelling units, just the R10 zone. It would take a further approval to allow something like you see on the display board. And just so the audience also understands that our zoning change is one thing and it may or may not be tied to a plan to do whatever the zoning allows. But under plan development approval, it is locked into a master plan with all the conditions, all the details that you want to assign to it. It cannot change unless there's another public hearing. Um, in terms of compatibility, the first thing, of course I've been interacting with the applicants for over a year, um, kind of scratching our heads as to how is the best way to lay it out. You know, like I said in the beginning, it's, it cannot be subdivided on its own, it does not have enough frontage. Um, it's really, to me, screams for a plan development. And so the question is, how is a good way to go about it? First thing I noticed is just like Ms. Rick had pointed out, there are four lots paralleling this to the east, so automatically you think four maybe a fifth one because one of the lots is a little bit large. Then you start looking at the layout and the expensive development, it becomes problematic. If this property were connected <coughs> to the rest of the neighborhood, and in my view it is not, it is isolated. You cannot go down a public path between here and the neighborhood to the west. The streets are not connected. Um, so if it is isolated, and if there's a way to design it within reason, that it is at least somewhat compatible, I think that's the way to go. If Simpson Place were connected through this property or adjacent to this property, then yes, we have to look at the neighborhoods to the north <coughs> for compatibility. But I see this a little bit more isolated. And I think the proposals on the PD help solidify that. Thank you. All right, I'll entertain a motion on this request. 